So good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, or good morning, depending on where you are. Welcome to our PFI Celebrating Trees Plant a Tree. This is actually um, a meeting to uh, let you hear a little bit more about our past campaigns. The Plant a Tree Action uh, Campaign is now for its third year, and we're hoping to show you how what has happened, what has happened in between times. Every year we choose a group or a person to award the uh, donations which we are able to collect. And then we choose uh, somebody who, or a group who are promoting planting trees. So in a little while, you'll be hearing from two past, um, I'm not gonna say winners because we're all winners, um, but two people who are very much engaged in this uh, campaign from the practical point of view. I would like to start, though, with we always have these meetings with a spiritual note. Um, but today I'd rather like to do it a little bit differently. As pagans, um, people of the earth, we always choose, we live very much in the now because we often observe things and we react immediately. Now, today I was reminded again of the campaign for trees um, is actually not, not that new. People have been really, really enamored by trees for many, many years. Um, and the original tree hoggers were actually from India, um, about 150 years ago. I can't remember the name now. Bishnoi, I think they were called. But this is actually a poem from Dana Lyons, and it's called Native Forest Song. When the trees are gone, who will brush against the sky? And when their leaves are gone, will there be any birds to fly? When the forest disappears, will there be any place to hide? For the owl and the bear, is there anything left behind? So today we end the silence and speak out for the trees. We'll save the native forests, people across the land. Now we take a stand to see the native forests live forever. And for the thousand year old fir, is this the final hour? And for the redwood and the cedar, will they feel the chainsaw's power? And in just 20 years, will our children read in books about the ancient forests and wonder how they looked? For the life or death of forests, who will make the choice? And for all the threatened species, who will raise their voice? In all climates and all countries, will we sing in many tongues? for the waters of the forest, for the air that fills our lungs. I'd like to start the meeting with our speaker from Portugal, our national coordinator for PFI Portugal, Isabella Andrade. Now, Isabella has been with uh, PFI all the 25 years, last year we celebrated 25 years of uh, PFI, um, but she's also been very much engaged in activism. Uh, born in 1960 in Lisbon, she very early discovered the divinatory arts and worked in the investigation of exper experimental practice of ancient polytheistic rituals. Um, again, her uh, activism within PFI has been a really a, a constant factor. And since um, when she started coming to the Netherlands for our national conferences and what have you, we always had them in the forest. So it was it was very clear that we were engaged in the forest from the, the right from the beginning. So I'd like to hand over the microphone to Isabel and let's hear a little bit more about your your views on activism, Isabel. Go ahead. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. So um, I'm going to speak in English and read the text. It's better. 
anyway, uh, yes, we have prepared a small um, video in Portuguese, thinking of maybe some people here were from the Lusophonous countries and they could accompany what I'm going to tell uh, having this small PowerPoint. Um, as we all know and daily observe, the news about climate changes has increased and there are numerous problems in several sectors, such as water scarcity, soil erosion, atmospheric pollution and many other set events that are transforming the multiple forms of life. In Portugal, for the majority of people, trees are seen as an ornament. Yes, on the sidewalks, on the parks, or for wood that earns money. Anyway, it's beginning to people to think on other ways. And are people beginning to become aware of trees importance? And we believe it's an important moment now to enhance and keep active this project dedicated to trees. Trees have shown that they are unique beings of immense generosity and they can be essential allies in this need to ensure the sustainability of life on Earth because they are a natural technology. In fact, these living beings have a natural point of environmental effi efficiency. And this is not ruling. Uh, sorry, uh, my laptop. I didn't want to use paper to save trees. And now my laptop, it's not working. So I have to improve what I was going to say. <laughs> um, from the beginning of PFI Portugal, we had um, for the first 50, 15 years worked on support of pagan spirituality. And we did a huge work on that uh, space for supporting and, um, and, and answering the media and universities and so on about the pagan spirituality. And as a tree, uh, we have many traditions of pagans in the same tree, but each one with its branch. But on the last 20 years, we, we are observing the world and we see that things are not going well. So when in Portugal, the activism become, we were always there as when we can. We fight for, still are doing that. We are fighting, fighting to end the bullfights. It's horrible. Here in Portugal, Spain and Mexico, people do that to the animals. I suppose many of you all, all haven't seen that, fortunately, but that was our great first beginning in activism against bullfights. Then we had with already other organizations um, a space and we did uh, manifestations and uh, speak with uh, civic uh, uh, people about the possibility of having uh, uh, the petrol here in our costa and the problems of the mines at Hope and Hair and now the problems of the trees. Trees here in Portugal now are becoming to see important and we have dedicated um, a work on the urban site because it is where we live. And one of our members and my assistant in PFI Portugal, Susana, she developed a workshop for families to, um, to educate them of what trees do, the importance of the trees. And because it is for families, 
we, we, we thought on the young ones. So we made the campaign. Can you please, Morgana, pass the, the PowerPoint? Because at the end of this film, <laughs> we did a campaign to stimulate their, their thoughts on the trees, hanging uh, small pieces of fruit in the shape of a heart on a tree. We call that the campaign for generous trees. Meanwhile, I have developed some public meditations with trees because trees are different on the four seasons. Of course, the meditation of winter, I never done with people outside. I do on my, my space, but it's sometimes hard to do outside. But this kind of actions of, uh, of workshops that we do on public parks and when uh, people ask us to do that, they are important because the new ones, the young ones, they think of the trees different. Um, I think it is important to think on the devastation of the great forests on Indonesia, at Brazil, of course, we must support as we can all those movements. But here, I think it's important each country to work on each place, on the local place. So <laughs> we have chosen an organization that became very small at the beginning, and now <laughs> they have support from many people and they raise funds. And they plant trees, the local trees. They don't plant trees for, for business. They plant trees as the old forest were. And it is important their work. And usually they need money to buy the trees or to buy lands for the new reforestation because people came from around Europe to help them when they do a campaign. Their name, it's Movimento Gaio. Um, and so uh, as pagans, we have to think as pagans, but we have to think as a whole world, our planets, it's our house of all people. So PF, Pagan Federation International um, have become more open and we are not working only with pagan organizations, but with the planet organizations. It is important the last years that PFI International has support the countries with this just this beautiful idea of celebrating trees, plant a tree. It's most important than the money of the world. I think it's the idea and we can have join and we can have beautiful moments when we, we join with other peoples and we do something for our house, our common house, our planet. So I couldn't read the beautiful things that trees can do but I think <laughs> in this improvement that they have explained that we are from our planet, we must work for it and help those who do it. Thank you very much and blessed be. Now, this is the campaign that we do with the children using only um, natural elements as the fruits or even the, the leaves of the trees in autumn. And so you can do a heart. You can put our hashtag there around the world. And so the tree knows that someone is caring for, for her and the environment. It's our, it's the result of our workshop and I saw on one of the last workshops, a street with hearts in the trees. <laughs> it was an idea from Susanna. People like that they learn how to respect trees. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Isabel. That was wonderful to hear. And I remember when we were in Lisbon, it's a beautiful city and it's one of the oldest cities in, in the world, as you know. And uh, so I'm very, very thankful for Isabel and the work she's doing in Portugal. <clears throat> she didn't mention, but we're also working with lobbying for the government as well. You didn't mention that, that Isabel, but of course you have regular demonstrations. Uh, so yes. thank you ever so much for your support. It's brilliant. I'd like it's to nice to be of the Gun Federation International. Absolutely, Thank you. absolutely. Um, I'd like to move on because um, we have two people online at the moment who have been recipients of the Plant a Tree campaign in uh, in earlier years. And first of all, I'd like to introduce. <clears throat> um, let's go to Abbey Roop first because Abbey Roop is um, one of the um, founders of uh, a group which uh, are working, they're working in Bankura in West Bengal, India. And it, in fact, it was Abiroop and Satarupa who were the first uh, recipients of our award, let's call it an award in 2021. And that became affectionately known as the Mango Tree Planting Project, because what were they doing? They were promoting planting mango trees. And I was there in, in 2020, in January 2020, just three years ago. And that was when uh, Abirupa and Satarupa and uh, people from the village of Bankura um, also um, welcomed us to the village and we planted the first hundred mango trees. So I'm going to uh, let Abiru give you a little bit more of an idea why the plant a tree campaign is so important but and really give us an update on what's happened with the mango tree planting project. So over to you Abiru. Thank you Morgana. Hello everyone, very good evening to all of you. I am Avirup Khan from West Bengal. Uh, right now I am in Kolkata because of uh, some because of some work and also I have been traveling a lot for last week and in the next week I have my brother's marriage ceremony. So because of that I am a bit busy and I could not send uh, the details to Morgana, but uh, I will definitely uh, share the details with you in detail about the plantation project and everything. So first of all, I would uh, like to share with you uh, uh, a very good information that uh, uh, in the World Interfaith Harmony Week this year, we fed around 4,000 needy people. That was the whole day program. We started feeding them from 10 a.m. IST to 4 p.m. IST. So you will be glad to know the know the event and uh, you'll be glad to see the photographs from Morgana. If Morgana has those, she can share with you all. So yeah, Morgana rightly said that uh, we, we have been doing this plantation project for a long time. And uh, we have been doing the project with different trees in different sector. But after you know, gathering the experience, the hands-on experience in the local grassroots level, when we started working with the plantation project, we come to know that, that how we can uh, make the women stronger economically. So if we started saying them that, see, you go and plant the trees, they will never listen to you because uh, they're so needy, they need money, and they need to feed their children, they need to educate their children. So without, I mean, having hunger in your belly, nobody will listen to your words that go and plant a tree and they will be a great person after plant, after you know, planting few trees and the world will be great after your plantation. So that was the main, uh, you know, uh, kick from where we got the uh, opportunity to plant mango trees that uh, that thought came from from them only that if we can start start planting mango trees, then the uh, villagers or the women can sell the mangoes later on, and they can earn money from from that you know from that project. So in 2020, we we plan to plant 
around 100 mango trees for, for a pilot project. So at that time, Morgana came to India and visited Kolkata. That, that was the, just before Corona period. So after Morgana went, to, went back to Netherlands, so Corona started. So at the time, we are glad to get Morgana to inaugurate the project in Bankura in a village. The place is uh, Sahib Ganj, where Morgana visited, and the village name is Narottampur village in, in, a, in a very rural place of Makura district. So in that village, we, 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 we have spoken with the, with the group of women, with the group of youth that see, we are going to, yeah. So we are going to plant 100 trees by our own. And the benefit of those mango trees by selling mangoes, you will get all the benefits by, by, you, by your own because we won't interfere in selling process. We, just, we are just going to plant the trees and uh, they will take care. I mean, the group of women and the youth will take care of the trees to, you know, to grow in future. And when the mango trees are going to give mangoes, so people will give, you no, know, people will sell the mangoes. And they, right now what they are doing, they, are, uh, they have the mango tree garden and they are giving, they are doing auction. I mean, if one, two, three or four buyer, buyers are coming to, you know, buy the mangoes, they are, give, they are going for auction. Who are giving them a good uh, bid so they can get the you know, mango, mangoes from them. So by that, the group of women are getting the benefit economically and they are selling the mangoes. And when the mangoes, I mean, the fruits are not there, when the trees are not giving fruits. So at that time, they will sell the mango trees and get and going to earn from that also. Mango trees are very, very, very expensive in our places. From, from the trees, they, you know, they make some furniture and also the group of women are the Men, no, they are the main actress in, in, in this project. They are going to lead the project. So our main focus is to train them the women by their own. They can earn for their own. They can you know, give their children a good education. They can, you know, they can increase their pocket size and they can have a good life by their own. Our, our focus is to we are going to plant the trees only by, you know, by, by buying the mango trees from the local vendors. In that process, PFI has helped us a lot and support us to plant more 400 trees. That is in total 500 trees we, we have already planted and it is in the process of giving fruits. So in this year, in this monsoon, we are planning to plant around 5,000 mango trees in in a, in an area we have you no know, located one person is ready to give the land and we are planning to plant around 5000 mango trees this monsoon so this is the project we are going to do so i hope your blessings and support will help us to you know will help us and motivate us to do this project successfully thank you and thank you, uh, Ari Ruby. It's been absolutely fabulous. And it's been fabulous watching how this project has unfolded. Uh, and again, uh, every uh, what, what really surprised, well, not surprised me, but we'd started supporting um, Trees for All in the Netherlands, that was our first uh, round. And we discovered that for 120 euros, they could plant 20 trees in the Netherlands. And I think about five or six trees in Latin America for 120 euros, okay? For that same amount of money, <laughs> we could plant 500 trees, mango trees in India. And I said to Abiru, this is so much more, I, I could just see that it was, because it was also empowering women, it was a complete project. This is, I said, I'd really, really like to hear more. So that's how we, we got involved. And uh, again, we will continue supporting uh, the mango tree planting project. Yes, Abiru, you, 
Yes. It cost around one euro per tree to plant in in our place. One euro only for one tree. Exactly. And, uh, you'll be you'll be surprised to hear from me that uh, in 2021 we have planted 400 more mango trees, and in 20, 2022 last, I mean in in November December that uh, trees are started giving fruit. So we have to destroy the fruits for their good livelihood. So. Uh, yeah, that that we have done it uh, already. Yes, exactly. So as I say, the, the, the whole project is, is um, if we talk about the SDGs, then of course we're covering things like poverty, empowering women, and, and, you, uh, and boys as well. I should have mentioned that uh, boys are also included as well. Uh, but it's mainly um, to help also to, to realise that they can have this economic uh, freedom as well and this is like village banking that they have to learn how to manage the money uh, etc so thanks ever so much again Abiru. and we will continue and the more money we get the more <laughs> the more money we, we can send to you to sustain this project so thank you very much um i'd like to just go on to Igor now um because Igor was the uh, recipient of the award in 2022 so Igor, would you like to uh, Bring us up to date with what's happening in Poland. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, Abiru, you're really doing an amazing job. That's something really nice to hear. You know, when I work in Malaysia and uh, flew over Kuala Lumpur, when I seen all these palm trees and the devastation of the rainforest, my heart was bleeding. So it's really great to hear someone is actually taking care of the trees and trying to bring back the community. This is very, very important thing you're doing. Uh, honestly, this is, uh, this is really amazing. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go a little bit differently because I've decided uh, that the best way, uh, me uh, as being a practical person, just to show you what the tree is doing to the land, uh, I'm going to show you my garden. I hope the, the it's not going to start snowing again. <laughs> A minute ago, it started snowing. So, so um, yeah, uh, I've bought the land 15 years ago. I'm going to switch over the camera and hopefully you can see. So this all was just the simple farmland, empty. Uh, it was very, very wet during the springtime. You couldn't walk on it. You You actually barely almost could swim in the, in, in the mud. So uh, I've decided I have to change it. Uh, in the summertime, when the dry weather came, the soil became like a solid rock uh, because it's a lot of clay. Uh, and it was like, you know, nothing was really growing uh, on it. And uh, probably the local farmers were just putting a lot of uh, fertilizers, chemicals to, to let grow anything on that land. So I decided to change it. So I first I found the grass, which is having very, very deep roots. And then I started planting the trees. Uh, uh, a lot of these trees are, uh, are just fruit trees. But as you see, they, they, they already very, very big. That one is probably around seven meters. This is a pear tree. And, uh, I've started planting the uh, lime trees uh, for the bees. I didn't have the bees yet. <laughs> it, was, it was just about to come at some point, but I've planted them because I just like them. You know, I, I decided they, they have an excellent energy uh, and the land just changed completely. Uh, at some point I even st stopped cutting that grass here uh, let it grow, uh, let it become a natural meadow. And as you see, I can walk on it. Uh, it's very, very wet winter this year, and there's completely no problem uh, with the water absorption. Uh, the thing is, the trees having massive roots, which act like a sponge, and they protecting during the summer, uh, protecting the land from the sun and overheating, uh, from the erosion and the springtime they just absorb all this water because the roots are like a sponge and uh, this is this is amazing transformation it's like 
like alchemy here, uh, as you see, it's just, and the energy around it is just something very, very amazing. Uh, and I just keep planting those trees. And you, you can see, you can see this is 15 years old trees. I'm not sure if you're gonna see this, uh, this is a, a beard, which is 15 years old, is massive, probably around 10 to 12 meters now. And this is my quiet space for meditation here, uh, my uh, stone, stone ring. And if you see all these just massively changed, changed and uh, changed the land, it, it transformed it like some alchemical, uh, alchemical uh, reaction. And at some point when I was start talking to these trees and talking to the nature, she gave me an answer. Uh, the final, if we wouldn't be here, the planet would be covered by forest. So this is something very, very natural. And that forest could fit all of us uh, as it did uh, during the time of hunters gatherers. We changed to farming culture, which, okay, it was all right at the beginning, but it went way, way too far. The big corporations took over the small companies, uh, small family uh, farms. And these people, because they were living on their own land, they, they were really attached to it. They didn't want to destroy it so much. At some point, the corporations just came into play and they don't treat the land as a part of them. And if you live off the land, if you eat the food of the land, at some point you start having this connection and you don't want to waste it. You don't want to destroy it. You just want to preserve it. You want to preserve it for the future generations, for your children, for other kids. Uh, I cannot imagine the world without green and thinking that I was part of it that destroyed the green for future generations. So I think, I think it's very, very important. As you see, these are, this is my, uh, beehives i decided to have five but you know the bees obviously like these lime trees because last year three families just came to me you know, <laughs> i had to catch them uh, so even the the animals and the birds around it's it's just amazing at the moment it's a bit quiet because it's winter time and uh, the nature is sleeping but still you can see the energy i can sense it between the trees so this is something I've started doing 15 years ago. And this year I was uh, awarded the, uh, the prize uh, from PFI uh, to plant, well, for planting and the bee project and the planting trees. So I decided to plant uh, more trees for this money. So these are, these are more lime trees here. Uh, I had to buy them a quite big ones because uh, it is difficult for uh, for them uh, to uh, to grow if they are too small so i haven't bought uh, many of them but i bought the uh, big ones and i've planted them uh, the clover and some uh, some of the uh, flowers for the bees uh, in between those trees so i hope uh, i hope they will start blooming this year or maybe next year and this is an excellent start because uh, I want to cover all my land with the trees, uh, different trees, uh, mainly uh, for the bees because as bees as a pollinators are very, very important for, uh, for us, yeah? And very important for other plants and uh, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a life of, of all of us. And a lot of people seem not to understand and not to protect the bees. Uh, but I think this is this is the way to do. So you see, uh, I'm like kind of surrounded by forest, but there is a lot of land here which belongs to me. And my plan, future plan, is actually to to replant the trees, turn it, turn the farmland uh, to, to to the forest. So something will stay. Uh, I hope my kids will pick it up and they will carry on. And I hope uh, at some point that will inspire 
some local people as well uh, to see that you can actually make a forest gardens. Uh, this is this is something very very important. I think this is with the knowledge we have nowadays, we could easily uh, build the forest gardens and being fed by them. Just change the way we seeing it. Uh, if we could slowly turn the farms back to the forests, this forest could really, really uh, make our life really, really better standard uh, than it's now. Uh, it's not, it's not something which happens over one decade or two decades. Uh, it requires a lot of time, but I think if we will be consequent and showing people that it's possible, maybe more and more people will just uh, catch that virus, I call it, and start <laughs> doing it. Start Absolutely. doing it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Igor. I've just been uh, adding a couple of things in the chat. Uh, of course, we uh, we first, well, I first met you many, many years ago in Poland, and um, you were very proud to show me the mountains there and even carried me to the top. <laughs> This is why I'm eternally grateful for Igor because he managed to get me to the top of the mountain. Anyway, um, but we kept in contact. And one of the things that we also uh, is very important to us is, is the spirituality. So we come from, as I say, from a pagan background. Um, but he he gave a, a, a really um, very good talk at our Blessed Be uh, Day. And that's when we started realizing he was talking about permaculture and uh, uh, the way it's so important that the land I've just put in 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 the in the chat um, about bees uh, pollination, not pollution, because that's become a kind of a, 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 a almost a battle cry, because pollution, of course, is the biggest the biggest problem, and um, as long as our, our our rivers and fields our land is polluted, and of course we know from Abhi Roop as well in India, as long as the rivers are treated and are filled with plastic and all sorts of rubbish. The, tr the trees die, uh, the bees die, uh, the rivers die. And I saw a dead river in India and believe me, it's heartbreaking. I have never seen anything quite so devastating. And that was actually for not far from Bankura. So Igor was, has been very, very um, adamant about, you know, when you when you connect spiritually with the land, of course, we, we have a lot of we always talk about the spirits of the land. So what we're trying to do with our practices as well is to um, listen to the moon. We also have a chat with the moon. The moon will also also tell you how to. And, and of course, Igor just mentioned as well, connecting with the land and speaking with the spirits of the land. And of course, everybody can do this. And I, I would definitely recommend it. So this is coming through again in Abiru's story. I can see that Mano has joined us um, from, uh, I think he's in Nepal, but he knows very clearly as well how important it is to support the land because the land will give us the food, but only when we treat the land with respect, with respect. So thank you ever so much, Igor, for pointing out permaculture, um, connecting with the bees, listening to the moon, uh, biodynamics is is very much based on the moon calendar uh we could go on for hours but the really important thing is that we can all do something even if it's just every month just to have a full moon ritual um but we uh we can be constantly in in contact with the nature spirits um and of course that then responds with you know how can we actually help so thank you ever so much, Igor, and um, I, I wish you every success with the lime trees. I just mentioned that um, the, the lime trees were a result of the award in 2022. And I'm glad to see that growing. He, he just said, but there's not much to see. It's winter time. I said, but that's what everybody wants to see. What is it like in Poland? And you just said about snow. Well, yes, it can still snow in Poland. It can still snow in Poland. So thank you very, very much for looking after the land, caring for the bees, and of course, caring for the trees. So thank you again, uh, also to Abby Roop and to Ego for um, providing us with, you know, concrete evidence of why planting trees is so important. I'd like to finish 
I mean, we're going to be here for an hour. Um, I'd like to finish, we'll, we'll have a, an open forum after the recording. So if you have any questions, don't worry, we'll answer all your questions. Uh, but I'd like to introduce Catherine now, who's recently <laughs> agreed to be our national coordinator for PFI Canada. Um, we've been without a coordinator for quite a number of years, but Catherine and I have known each other for many, many years. Um, she's very much involved in interfaith, is also familiar with URI, uh, but her heart lies obviously in the um, interfaith dialogue as a person of people of the earth. We say a lot of people don't like this word pagan. Unfortunately, it, it conjures up all sorts of weird and wonderful things, but pagans are nice people, <laughs> generally speaking. But as people of the earth, Catherine has been very much involved in interfaith, uh, but also um, a staunch supporter for indigenous rights. I know she's done ever such a lot for the indigenous people in Canada. And I said that I'd love to um, hear a little bit more about the work with Indigenous people um, and especially their love also for forests. So she's now going to uh, tell us a little bit more about one of the uh, trees that she's very sacred to Canada. So over to you, Catherine. Yes, I'm mute. <laughs> Please unmute, Catherine. <laughs> it takes me a bit because I had another setup. So here we go. I'm unmute. I now need to reformat everything. Here we go. Yes. No, no, no. I'll, I'll start sharing. I'll start sharing your um, please your presentation. So just bear please, with thank me. you. Two seconds. Thank you. There so, we uh, so thank you very much. Um, this is, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Canada. And um, a little bit has been mentioned already about understanding the land beneath your feet, um, talking to the spirits, talking and getting to know that land. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the our ancestral land here in Canada. And a sacred tree to me personally is the tamarack tree. And when I first moved to Canada, the um, coven that I formed, uh, we took, we, our name became tamarack because, well, you'll find out why. So next slide. So um, Canada is working through a process of truth and reconciliation. Those of us who came to Canada as settlers are learning about how the indigenous peoples who lived on this land were treated during the time of discovery and colonization and into the present time, those things still going on. The Truth and Reconciliation Report listed 94 items that needed to be addressed at all levels of Canadian society to start the healing process for Indigenous, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Uh, these are different groups of people. Um, indigenous were those that didn't have a nation or a tribe specifically. Uh, First Nations were peoples who had built a, a nation. Um, in um, settler terms, the Iroquois, Ojibwe, Cree, these were mighty nations of people. Um, the Iroquois in particular uh, were cross-border uh, US and Canada and still are at this point. Um, the, Mate, uh, the Inuit are the people that live in the far north of Canada and the Métis is a combination and they formed their own culture. These were um, indigenous people, and when the uh, French were, came over and started doing hunting and trapping in the far north, the two met, they got together, they made a, their own culture, and they're, not, they're now recognized as their own 
culture and people and recognized as First Nation because of how they live and their cultural beliefs, et cetera. Um, so today I will share with you some information about land acknowledgements and one of the sacred trees of this land. Uh, we can send this presentation out. It has a link to the actual um, commission report with the call to action if you're interested in some of the other things. Next slide. So land acknowledgement. The picture is a picture from my home, um, just a block away from where I live, of Ontario, looking over the, um, the lake at sunrise. And it, it is, that was taken in midwinter, so in, in December. Not this past December, but a few years ago. Important gatherings in Canada, from things such as meetings and presentations to professional sporting events, we start with a land acknowledgement. It is important for us to write our own land acknowledgements. We're encouraged to do so. Because what it makes you do is understand where you came from and understand your connection to the land that you're on. A land acknowledgement talks about the people that came before you. My original land acknowledgement was very long because I went back through the history of my family, uh, back to 1850 when they came to North America and were through a land grant were given land formerly owned by um, First Nations people in that part of Illinois. Now, and then I go through and I end with um, what I'm going to say now to start my presentation. I live on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe, Huron Wendat, Cree, Mississaugas, and many other peoples since time immemorial. It is under the Dish with One Spoon Treaty between the Iroquois and the Ojibwe nations, Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty. Toronto, or Ticaranto, is still home to many indigenous First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, as we all learn to take care of this land around Lake Ontario or the Lake of Shining Waters, make which. Ah, you went one, one little bit too fast, but that's okay. Stay, uh, you can go back, it's okay. Um, you're probably wondering why I picked the tamarack besides the fact that I have a personal connection and not the maple tree as a sacred tree for Canada. Everyone knows maple tree is important to Canada. Part of our currency is based on maple syrup, of all things. We're the number one exporter of maple syrup in the world. Maple syrup is sacred. Um, we're still in February. Um, I'm in between blizzards right now. So another one will come Monday. We got um, about 25 um, centimeters of snow in the past two days. We're looking at another 15, I think. But soon, towards the end of March, the, the sap will start running. And that's where things get busy, especially in Northern Canada. Maple syrup, very important. But also the other thing we get from maple trees is maple sugar, which it comes from the actual sap. It is so easy to make maple sugar. I've done it. I've been taught how. It is healthy and it was used as actual currency by First Nations people. They keep it in, uh, they would make the sugar and they'd make these cones out of um, the bark of birch trees and fill them with sugar. And that was the currency you would trade. And archeologists have actually found these cones in um, Arizona. So trading between nations covered the entire area of what we call Turtle Island. 
all the way into Arizona and the maple sugar was so good. So like honey, it lasts. And it also was not responsible for First Nations peoples to get to be diabetic because it wasn't processed. It was natural. That's all I'm gonna say about maple trees. We're now gonna go into the tamarack and why it is so important to native peoples. So now the next slide. I'm gonna tell you a story because this is how native peoples share their information generation to generation, they share it through stories. In the far northern land of known as Nunavut, Canada, now, when the fall season was changing into winter, a flock of birds were heading south on their seasonal migration. Partway through their journey, the first storm of winter descended without warning. It was an especially ferocious wind because it had just been released from the Greek grip of summer and fall, and it wanted to celebrate with a big blow. The frantic birds could sense the danger and hurried to find shelter. Still, being so far north, beyond what we call the Arctic Circle, the only shelter the weakening birds could see in the distance were the majestic tamarack trees. In those days, tamarack trees were indeed the most majestic trees in the forest. They grew bigger and taller than any other tree in the north. They had thick branches full of needles that were soft as feathers to keep them warm throughout the winters. These soft needles also allowed them to live farther north where no other tree could thrive. Because of this, they'd become very proud and spent all of their summers admiring their reflection in the Northern lakes and ponds. For some unknown reason during that particular storm, when the birds needed shelter the most, the majestic tamarack trees said, no, you cannot land on us. We're starting our winter sleep and your noisy antics will keep us awake. Find another place to ride out the storm. Tired and cold, the birds were forced to fly on. The great spirit watched the entire drama unfold and became very disappointed with the tamarack trees. In an effort to teach a lesson, the creator declared, because you did not give the birds any shelter, none of you will have shelter from the cold of winter. And from now on, your needles will fall like leaves of the trees to the south. Suddenly, all of the slumbering, slumbering tamaracks awakened to feel the chilling wind on their branches. They watched helplessly as the warm winter coat fell to the ground. The winters were very hard on the tamarack. In the years that followed, they gradually, gradually learned to weather the storm, weather the cold by becoming smaller, more unassuming, and at the same time, they became stronger and more durable. The tamarack trees learned from their error and to show their regret at what they had done, they were determined to become a servant of the first peoples who inhabited this land. This pleased the great spirit who then decided to bestow on the tamarack trees a new and great honor. With the help of the spirit of the muskeg, the bog lands. Nutrients were released into the trees, allowing them to become a source of much needed medicines and tools.
for generations to come. Many years later, while traveling in the woods, a man stopped for a rest with his back to a young tamarack tree. Surrounded by the peace of the forest, he fell into a deep sleep. He dreamed that he was traveling through a forest of tamaracks. And when he stopped to touch their soft branches, their soft needles, he sensed they were speaking to him. As he listened, they told him of their long ago story and assured him that the forgotten le legend had really happened. Then a young Tamarack that was willing to be of some assistance offered to accompany him on his journey for support. He was very touched by this young tree's offer and decided to honor the request. All of the other trees watched as the man took out his hunting knife, cut down, trimmed, and peeled the smoothed young tree into a tamarack hiking stick. By the time he was finished, many of the young trees were eagerly volunteering themselves for the honor and the adventure of being a support for the and companion for the ever increasing numbers of people that were walking the many trails of this vast land. Whenever he hiked with his tamarack hiking stick, it was with renewed vigor in his step and a sense of unity with nature. The trees and the birds, the water and the animals, the earth and the sky. While relaxing at the end of the day, when his hike was finished, he would gaze at his cherished stick and reflect on the days of yore. This is the story that I tell, may you be blessed by its telling. So oh, next slide. So as you can see, the Tamarack was given us, has given native peoples a lot. The name comes from the Algonquin word, akamatak, meaning wood used for making snowshoes. Native languages are very practical and they're mostly verb based. It looks like an evergreen tree, but it is not. It is a deciduous conifer, and it can be found as far north as far as north of the Arctic Circle and down into the southeastern United States. It grows primarily in swamps or bogs. And in Northern California, it is an important part of the boreal forest, which is one of the largest natural forests still in existence in the world, mostly unchanged although that unfortunately will be changing um, in, in Northern Ontario, because of course there's natural minerals there. And so we've been doing a lot of fights and involved a lot of First Nations people in developing certain rules that would at least prevent some of the devastation that will happen because of this need that people have for cell phones and other electronics. Through the seasons, the tamarack in the fall, its needles turn a bright yellow. They're one of the first trees to do this. So you can easily spot them, especially when they're growing next to um, pine trees and other, um, and other evergreen trees. So you see this bright yellow on the, on the hillsides and on the bogs. In the winter, the branches are very crispy. That's how they're described. They're very brittle. So but that's what, and, especially when they're growing next to um, pine trees and other. Okay. Um, the branches are very crispy and the tree looks dead. But this is what protects it during the winter. In the spring, this is one of the first signs of the coming of spring in the Canadian Arctic. 
the leaves, little buds, the green little buds. And they'll also have these pine cones. And you can kind of see in this picture, the pine cones, they look like little roses. And I didn't get a really good picture of it. I may have a close-up picture of the pine cones, we'll see. But they look like little bitty rose buds. And during the spring, they're bright red. Next slide. We talked about the gifts. Here's just a few of the many gifts of the pine of the um, of the tamarack for food. You can uh, the spring shoots are very nutritious and can be boiled and eaten. They really um, it's a really good source of of nutrition of nutrition. They're very nutritious. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Um, the inner bark can be mixed, can be um, mixed with other flowers. You, you cut it down, you, and they say that you really want to mix it with other flowers because the taste is a little bitter. So by mixing it with other types of, of tree flowers, uh, yeah, it becomes more palatable. The sap is very easy to chew. So you take the sap, especially during the winter when, it, when the sap first starts running, you take some of the sap, you put it on, onto the snow, it will harden. And now you've got something that you can chew on it, and it tastes as sweet as maple, syrup, maple sap. For medicines, I just listed a few, but basically the medicines take you from head to toe, every part of your body can use some sort of medicine from this tree. There are various types of teas that can be made. Uh, I listed just some of the ways the teas are used um, as an astringent, laxatives, diuretic, rheumatism, skin ailments, gargled for sore throats, um, anything having to do with the digestive system, they, they help with. Uh, teas will be made by the needles. They can be made by the outer book bark and the inner bark. So all three, and they all provide different types of medicines. Poultices from the inner bark are used on skin sores, swelling, inflammations, burns, and headaches. If you had a headache, you could put a poultice just across your forehead or at the back of your neck and it would get rid of the headache. They soon learned that they could be used for in technology. And I, that's what they call it. I, I found it weird to call it that way, but this is um, what they, the term they used. This was used to make things. So the Ojibwe used the roots to make twined woven bags. And in those bags, they would put the medicines that they got from the tamarack. So you, this would give them a way to carry the medicines around where they needed them. The Iroquois used the bark, not bard, the bark for tanning. So able to you know, tan the leather that they got from hunting deer and other um, animals that live in the northern part of Canada. The Cree made toboggans and snowshoes and canoes, all things very, very important to them. But they also made these twig goose hunting decoys. And the making of the tamarack twig goose decoys is an aid in hunting. And it's been passed down among the Cree people for generation to generation. It is a necessary technology which has, among Cree, Cree craftspeople, evolved into a remarkable art. There are two Cree artists from James Bay, Quebec, um, John Blue Boy and Harry Whiskey Chan, who bring life to these tamarack decoys as they are creating them, they breathe into them the words, these words. They are watching, listening, 
aware. So they bring these birds to life to help. And I, this is a, a picture of one, of, I think this one is by um, Harry Whiskey Chan. Um, and they're, they're absolutely beautiful. You can actually find these um, online and purchase them through um, eBay or Etsy sites. Um, next slide. And that's what I have about the camera. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. So thank you so much, Catherine. That was really, really informative. I, I always associate, as you rightly mentioned, the maple tree. Um, but the, now learning about the tamarack tree, wow, that's amazing. So thank you ever, ever so much. Again, it's the, the um, part of what we're trying to do with P at PFI is, is also to connect not just with the spirituality of people of the earth, but also their their law, the wisdom, the stories, the stories which are told. And of course, as uh, Catherine mentioned right at the beginning, there is also a greater awareness of, towards peace and reconciliation. And I think part of our plant a tree uh, action is also to, to uh, you know, be part of this reconciliation. How can we um, play a part in supporting those people and that's so in a small way this is what we're trying to do as well so Isabel is now outside I see <laughs> oh it's cold here <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I've just come back from St Marta of course in the Caribbean it's very sunny here but it's like five degrees <laughs> oh a heat wave that's oh, yeah, heat weather wave, heat wave. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway we're coming up to, well we've gone past the hour but Every minute spent here is worth worth an hour. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to finish now thanking all of you. Um, I will give some information how to if you would like to make a donation as part of this plant a tree um, campaign. Uh, PFI members who become members or renew their membership, uh, a part of their fees will actually go towards the the plant a tree kind of fund if you like. Um, but you and what we're doing when every, anybody renews or is, becomes a member, uh, two euros of that membership fee will go towards the fund. Um, and anybody who makes a, a separate uh, a separate donation, PFI will uh, will op it by a couple of other euros. So every single euro you, you're going to donate to us is also going to be backed by a little bit more from PFI as well. So Abby Roop we will be um, sustaining the project in Bankura. I'm sure that uh, if Igor asks us nicely, <laughs> no, we'll send some money for more trees if you like. Uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. And the other thing is that all of you, all of you start thinking now about people, groups in your area, in your country, PFI is international. We do work globally. If you can think of anybody who would desperately benefit by our attention, awareness, uh, but would also appreciate a little bit of money uh, to help them on their way, then please, please, please think about it and you can uh, let us know if you uh, know somebody and we will start looking. So the campaign finishes on March 21st, which is spring equinox. Then we'll we'll assess, assess how much money is actually being uh, collected, and then we'll start looking for people who will be the recipient of um, the new uh, for the new award 2023. So keep in touch if you've got any questions. We're going to have an open forum uh, when we finish the recording, uh, so don't go don't go yet. But the open forum is of course private, so um, we don't need to. You can. If you have any any questions which need to be de dealt with discreetly, especially especially if you know of people who are destroying forests, any of the advocacy we're doing, a lot of work in the advocacy side. Isabel, as I said, has also been lobbying the um, Portuguese government. Um, so stay in stay online. But I'd just like to now finish this whole meeting. I opened with a serious poem about the trees but I also I would like to finish with 
this is a poem for uh, to help children to understand why trees are so important. I'll I'll publish it on the forum sometime or so do keep it you can get to the forum you don't have to be a forum member but also check in on our forum I'll put a few addresses later um so to end this meeting I would just like to finish with a tree song learn about trees roots and trunks and leaves trees 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 have roots and trunks and leaves Trees, trees, trees have buds and fruits and seeds. Trees, trees, trees a home for birds and bees. We all need our trees, trees, trees. Home for nests of flying birds. Home for buzzing honeybees. Home for bats so brown and black. Some squirrels share those big tall trees. Shades of slithering sharp toothed snake. Big bugs that blow their inner breeze. Many things are making homes in green, green leaves of these tall trees. So many blessings to you all. And don't forget, blessed be.